we like Cayman because the, of the walls, right, and the, the marine life, a lot of, uh, a lot of abundant life. We feel very comfortable, the animals are well protected, and it's just been a wonderful diving experience. Um, in the Cayman Islands, we all live within, if not feet, a few hundred yards of the marine environment. It's always been part of our culture, and as a people, we've learned to live with it and manage it to live in harmony with it. Well, there's no doubt that Cayman's marine environment is a truly remarkable place. Spectacular coral reefs, crystal clear waters, beautiful beaches, a huge diversity and range of fish and, and animals uh, to look at. So it's really something that, that, that is to be, to be valued by everybody, uh, not just Caymanians alike. It's uh, really a world resource and uh, we're very proud to have that. We have uh, many more nationalities uh, being part of our, our population, um, part of our community. Uh, so we are accommodating many different sort of um, cultures and, and other people's uh, way of doing things here. And our, mar our marine protected areas have to basically respond not only to those challenges, but also to the new and emerging challenges from an environmental perspective and one of the main challenges that we will are facing now and will be facing even uh, more so in the future uh, revolves around issues thrown up by climate change. Climate change is probably the largest, newest, most uh, devastating threat to the marine environment and we're seeing a lot of that here. The sea surface temperatures uh, are increasing dramatically. We're seeing a lot of increased intensities in storm and frequencies of storms and storms detrimental to reefs, although reefs have evolved over the years with them. We're seeing a lot of uh, kind of repeat impacts, which doesn't give the time for reefs to recover. The increase in sea temperature also leads to devastating bleaching events, corals turning ghostly white uh, and to all intents and purposes going into a dormant stage um, with huge amounts of, of coral dying as a result of that. 25 years ago, the government and the people took a very bold step and created marine protected areas. Um, when, when marine protected areas were actually a fairly new concept, um, we, we set aside these areas so that we could ensure that the resources that are in our seas around our islands would be there for generations to come. Our current marine park system really uh, focuses, the regulations really focus very heavily on controlling um, fishing. You know, how you can fish, where you can fish, what you can fish. Um, the re the, the, what we need to do now is to look at, as I was saying earlier, the impacts that are currently taking place. Um, that we're currently having to face, the, the new challenges in terms of climate change, etc. And take a look at the marine protected areas from that perspective, um, as well as obviously um, continue to look at the impacts of overfishing, etc. because our population, our human population, has more than doubled since we put the marine parks in place. The current level over the last 25 years was great. Um, it has served us well. However, I think we've come to the point where we um, have almost exhausted that resiliency factor that was always in there because mainly as humans, we are demanding of our marine environment and we have to think forward and how do we try to um, mitigate considering all these factors that we can't really change, how do we give them the best chance to survive into the future that we as a people and our future generations still have coral reefs and fish, mangroves and seagrasses and everything that we enjoy now. We can't really think about redesigning a park system unless we have the facts or the, if you like, the, the parameters to which we'd like to measure our parks against. Um, so over the past uh, year and a half the department has been working as part of the Marine Parks Darwin Initiative the Darwin Initiative is a, um, a three-year project 
funded by uh, the UK's uh, DEFRA Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs in the UK. Um, it's in collaboration uh, with the lead agency uh, Bangor School of Ocean Sciences in the UK and are also a part with um, the Nature Conservancy, the TNC, out of the US. The project um, obviously is being funneled through the Department of Environment in Cayman. We're the coordinators on the ground in the Cayman Islands. Uh, and it, it, it meets a number of obligations actually that we have under, under conventions that were signed up to, uh, in particular the Convention on Bio Biological Diversity, the CBD. Uh, these are international conventions that came and signs up to that basically commits levels of protection for the environment or levels of, of inter interaction with the environment. Right now the challenge for us is to take a look at our marine protected areas and to make sure that we plan for the future. So we need to understand the impacts that are currently taking place on the reefs figure out how best we can address those impacts, mitigate them, um, and then plan our marine protected areas so that we give our coral reefs and the resources um, that they support the best possible chance of surviving. We have been looking at various measurable aspects of parks. In this instance, we're looking at numbers of fish, the amounts of fish that we find inside and outside parks, you would expect a marine protected area perhaps to have higher fish densities without, once all the threats are removed. Uh, and indeed, these are the kind of things that we're finding. Evidence to support that the marine protected areas do work. We've also been looking at coral cover. I mentioned before that coral is the, the basically the backbone to reef systems uh, and it's a good index of, of coral, of, of reef health. So we measure the amount of coral that we find both inside and outside of parks uh, and in areas around the island so that we can uh, make sure that the, that the best areas, uh, the most resilient areas, the healthy areas uh, are afforded protection when and, in, and indeed if we do expand the parks. The department has also been working on long-term initiatives to do with coral reefs, uh, to do with water quality and to do with conch and lobster assessments and we're bringing all of that data into some sophisticated marine park modelling software that's been developed for Australia uh, and we're using that to help us design what we think would be an optimum set of marine protected areas. In doing so you can't get away from the fact that the marine parks are for the people of the Cayman Islands uh, and as a result of that we greatly need public input. Parks need to work with the people that they're there for so we will be going to the public, we will be looking to the stakeholders the people of the Cayman Islands, the people interested in marine protected areas, for input into how parks will best suit them, what they would like to see in a newly designed or a newly uh, improved system of protected areas. You know, the coral reefs are basically the rainforest equivalent below water. People get in there and they're absolutely are flabbergasted by it. how alive, vibrant, and everything is its a whole new world. And to experience that is very emotional in one sense. And that's what keeps people coming back to enjoy that. And if we can do that, we ensure the viability of our product as a tourism destination and as Caymanian people that enjoy it in the past, present, and into the